can do. <laughs> Atta, he was down on the beach and he was scaling some fish and opening the mussels and he heard that cry of alarm. <laughs> that's my mother, that's my mother. I wonder what is wrong. He drops the, the fish and the, and the mussels on the rock and he runs up the path to his mum in the path. Oh, his mother said, oh, she's, she's crying, mother, mother, what's wrong? What's the matter? Oh, I just got a, a message. <laughs> Your father, he's passed away on a fire of violence. <laughs> what shall I do, mother? What shall I do? <laughs> you must go into the forest and you must look for the tallest of the trees and you must cut that tree down and you must fashion a beautiful waka so that you can go and get our farm. From that far off island. I shall do that right now, mother. And so he runs out of her house and to his house and he takes the green stone heads off the wall, the green stone axe, puts it into his kit, picks the kit up, and he wanders off into the garden of Tani, into the forest, into the Nahe. He's looking around, he's looking around at all of these trees. Ah, no, not that one, it's not big enough. Ah, no, that one is a little bit rotten. It won't make a good canoe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. He sees a beautiful tree reaching up, tall, 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 above the clouds. That is the tree that I am going to cut down to fashion me a beautiful waka. He takes the greenstone axe out of his kit and he begins to cut that tree. Let's have a chopping sound. <laughs> And he's there all day and he's cutting at this tree. He's cutting at it, he's sweating. Oh, he can't stop. He has to cut it down. And right on down, that mighty weak tree waves back and forth. And it falls to the ground with a mighty crash. Let's have a big crashing sound. He is tired and he is hungry. He spent all day looking for this beautiful tree and he spent all day cutting it down. He is too tired to pick up the chisel and to carve the canoe. And so he decides to go home and to have a meal and to have a good rest. I shall go home, I shall have a meal and I shall have a good rest and tomorrow I will come back and I will carve this beautiful log, this beautiful tree that I have found this evening. So he picks up his greenstone axe in his kit there and he walks back through the forest gets home, has a meal, and falls asleep. <coughs> Any of you heard your father snoring like that? <laughs> Same as Rate. <laughs> Early the next morning with the sun streaming through the windows, he wakes up, he stretches, he wipes the sleep from his eyes. I'm ready. I'm ready to go and what? <laughs> ah, that tree and so he picks up his green stone necks in his kit and he walks back into the forest he's looking around on the forest floor <sighs> yeah through the day past lunchtime he's still looking <sighs> five o'clock he's still looking it's about six about seven about eight just on dark what is that i'm sure that's the tree that I cut down today. What is happening here? He takes the greenstone axe and he starts cutting that tree again. Let's have a chopping sound. Let's have a chopping action. And right on down, the tree wavers back and forth and falls to the ground with a mighty <laughs> falls to the ground with a mighty <laughs> falls to the ground with a mighty <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, what's the matter? Tired. who's tired? Oh, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go back home and boy oh, he has a little bit of a cry afterwards goes back home and he's going to have a Neil is going to have a okay. What do your mind? What do your papa sound like when they're having a sleep? And he has a good sleep. Early the next morning, with the sun streaming through the windows, he is awoken 
by the warmth of the sun. He stands up, he stretches. Oh, what a beautiful day. I am going to go and hug this canoe. So he picks up his green stone axe and his kitty, and he walks back through the forest. And he's looking around. He's looking around. Yeah, he's looking around. And all of a sudden, he sees. What does he see? What does he see? The tree. And what about the tree? It's us. He sees the tree that he cut down the day before. It's standing and he's looking at it. What? Who did this? What's happening? Oh. And he says, Greenstone next. And he begins to cut that tree. Let's have a cutting sound. <laughs> And right on dark, that mighty tree wavers back and forth. And falls to the ground with a mighty <laughs> He's hot. He's tired. He's hungry. What does he do? Go back home. No. <laughs> he decides to wait to hide behind the black bush so he can see what has been happening. So he picks up his green stone next and walks behind the flax bush. And he sits down behind the flax bush and he waits. And he waits. Not a sound in the forest. Can you say, Kare kau he o? Kare kau he o. That means not a sound in the forest. At five seconds to midnight, Kare kau he oro. Kare kau he oro. At four seconds to midnight. Kare kau he oro. At three seconds to midnight. Kare kau he oro. At two seconds to midnight. Kare kau he oro. At one second to midnight. Kare kau he oro. At midnight. No, there was heaps of sound. There was singing and laughter and chatter right around midnight. Do you know what was happening? All of the birds and all of the insects and all of the animals of Tanemata, they were going to the base of the tree and they were picking up the chips and they were all rebuilding the tree so that it would stand tall, tall. Reaching up into the dark of the night. Well, Tuli, Tuli, uh, uh, Rata is watching this. Rata is watching this from behind the flat bush. What do you think Rata does? He comes into the birds. He chases the birds, yes. Good, good. What else? What do you think Rata does? He reaches out to the animals. Yes, he's. Uh, what do you think he's feeling? Angry. Oh, angry. He's feeling angry. So he jumps out from behind the flat bush. He's. <laughs> You! What do you think you're doing? I spent three days cutting these trees down, this tree down, and you're rebuilding them. What's happening here? All of a sudden, he feels this little insect crawling onto his big toe, past his ankle, up past his knee, up his thigh, and up onto his shoulder. It was the tiniest of the tiniest of the tiniest of insects in the forest. And the insect said to Rata, 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 you did not perform the prayer correctly. You did not ask for permission to cut down one of Tane's children. And so he has sent all of his children to rebuild this tree so that it stands tall, tall, reaching up into the dark of the night. Oh my gosh, that have felt real, really sad. He turns to the little insect and goes, I'm sorry, I did not do the prayer call. There's no right. I did not. I am sick. And he 
and the little insect crawled down the arm, down the thigh, past the knee, over the big toe, and went back to pick up the chips to carry on rebuilding that tree. Lato picked up his flax kit with his axe and greenstone nails, and he walked back home, had a meal, and he slept. Early the next morning, the sun streaming through the windows. Rata is still in a slumber, he's still asleep. And he is wakened by this little tiny voice. Rata! Rata! Follow me! Follow me! He wakes up and he looks down at the floor and he sees the tiniest little tiny voice waving at him off his bed. Come with me! Rata gets out of bed and follows that insect back through the forest and when they arrive at the place where the waka had been the, the tree had been felled what do you think he felt oh, yes uh, happy? he felt happy oh, yes he found, a he found a waka what he saw amazed him he saw the most beautifully carved and fashioned waka that one would ever see and he turns to the tiniest of the insects and says, why? Why have you done this? The tiniest of the insects looks up and says, Ah, Tanimanta saw that you knew you had done wrong and you apologized. And so he has asked all of his children to come and fashion you a waka so that you can... What's he fashioning the waka for? Why is he building the waka? to go and get his papa from a far off island. And so the tiniest of insects and the loudest of the voices goes, oh, and all of the birds and insects and animals go, hey. can you go that, go he for me? Hey. I'm going to go kiamo and you're going to go hey. Ready? Oh, hey. And I want you to say, te waka. I'm going to go to your mind. You're going to go to waka. Ready? To your Well, you know what? The tiniest of the insects goes. Kiamo! Kiamo! Okay, that is a pulling a pulling chant, all right? So what he's done is he's called all of the animals and birds to attention and he's asked them to grab a hold of the rope at the front of the canoe and to drag it through the forest. And they drag that canoe through the forest and down to the beach. And the tiniest of the insects is, Rata, there's your waka. You may go and fetch your father from a far off island. And that's the story of Rata and the Kenya. Mm -hmm.